Sammy Do coming to you live from Press Resort Mobile Studios out here walking the pooch can. Want to give you another gold nugget. Another gold nugget. And this gold nugget I want to talk about is fix skin. If you're in this real estate business, you're still trying to get your first or second deal done, you need a little help, let me talk to you about thick skins. You stay tuned. Sammy Do live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. Send me do back at you. I wanted to come back at you from the office because I actually wanted to cover some notes on this thick skin topic, this thick skin golden nugget nugget that I want to share with you. Um, and so before I do that, uh, please be sure uh, to subscribe, like, uh, even share this video if you think it might help someone. This is a coaching and mentoring channel. This is not a channel where I show off uh, how many checks and uh, big houses and show off all my crew that's working. That's not what this channel is all about. There's enough out there for this and uh, I'm coming to you from a grass root, real raw, straight in your face, no glitz and glam. Uh, the psychology, the mentality, the ways that you have to do this business. And so if you are actually uh, needing, uh, if you've never had any mentorship or coaching in the real estate investing business and you do need it, uh, also feel free to click the link inside the description and we can set up a 30 minute free consult where we can talk about your current standings with the business and what, what you need to do. And if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one authentic relationship with me, how we can do that. All right. So back with, uh, thick skin. Thick skin. You know, there are a lot of no's in this business. A lot of no's in this business. A lot of resistance in this business. And you, you actually have to develop thick skin. I want to kind of just give you a visual of an example. I do a little golf, <laughs> unless golf does me, but this is a golf glove. Okay? This is a this is a golf glove. Alright. I'm not pushing a brand or anything like that, but uh, this is my bare hand as a golf glove. And why? Because when you swing the club, when you do that so many times over a period of time, you start to get, th get these, these calluses. Uh, and, 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 and it gets hurt. It gets to be a little sometimes painful. Uh, it, could, it could be sore. And it can be a period of time. So when you put on this glove, which this is leather, uh, I know you you can only see it, but I'm just telling you this is this is a quality glove. Uh, this is a leather glove. It, it's going to take a little bit more than uh, the norm to to really damage the skin, my skin that's under there. So this is what you, what I would say think, thickening my skin from the resistance of the clubs, from the resistance of the clubs that's going to cause damage to my bare skin. Okay, thick skin, right? This is leather. And leather is actually a really good form of thick skin. The thick skin that I want to kind of talk to you about is more from a mental standpoint. Uh, in the real estate investing business, uh, there, there's not so much physicality. Uh, uh, actually, as physical as you want. If you want to do uh, pick up the hammer and the nails yourself, you can. Uh, if you want to pick pick out toilets, you can. You know, in the real estate investing business. You can do as much as you want or as little as you want. Uh, and that's not the angle uh, that I'm coming to you from. I'm coming to you more from a mental standpoint, especially while you are trying to get started. If you are trying to get your first deal or your second deal or just trying to just get a trend going in your business and you're just having some discouraging uh, challenges, this is a platform that you want to subscribe to. Uh, and, and, and tune in on. So from a mental standpoint, um, you have to understand how to uh, just gain the knowledge of the no. 
gain the knowledge of the know. And when I say gain the knowledge of the know, understand what those knows mean. Because you're going to run into a lot of knows in this business. And for most people, knows will shut you down. <laughs> Nobody wants to go against the resistance. People want to go along with how things are going freely and smoothly. That's just kind of natural. It's natural to just want everybody to like you, want everybody to kind of like you for you and want everybody to kind of agree with you to some degree and that's just kind of natural that resistance uh, different folks have different degrees of it but nobody really likes it and it takes a certain amount of discipline and focus to kind of push through it and so let's kind of talk about uh, where those no's come from right why and why those no's exist uh, and let me give you let me give you a no one area you really need to have fixed in from is your family and friends. Folks, you are trying to do something different than 95% of what everybody else is doing in America. You are trying to start your business and have a successful business, specifically in real estate. And in the process of doing that, you're going to have resistance. Sometimes the resistance can come pretty close. It could be your friends, your spouse. It could be just the situation that you're in that it, that is telling you to do otherwise. It, it could be, um, and, and how, how does it work? Well, you've been working on trying to deal, get a deal. It's been six months, and all of a sudden your wife is wondering, well, where you been? How come we're not going out like we used to? How come you're not buying the nice dinners and taking me out and letting me get this dress and this purse or whatever? Well, because you're really trying to start the business. Now, yeah, it's taken six months and she's not seeing the results and she's wondering what's going on with you. So guess what? That's going to make you kind of rethink about what you're doing. That's, that's a form of a no, a negative resistance to your success. Now, it shouldn't have to take you six months, but, you know, when you don't have a mentor, it, it, it can take you longer. It took me 10 months to get my first deal. Your friends, you know, you're not going out. You're not calling them as much. Uh, or <laughs> here's one this is what I learned you know I used to have folks always calling on me because they always wanted something calling just because they really wanted something hey man can you loan me this can you give me that hey can you come support me over here can you come support me over here I think your presence would mean a whole lot here and this you know they wanted me to be on their agenda they wanted me to get out of my pocket to give to them they wanted me to support their cause they they wanted a lot and I, I had to get to a point of shutting that down in order so I can focus on building my business and I don't have a problem with giving and giving back but when you're empty <laughs> and you don't have nothing to give and you still keep trying to give you bankrupting your whole self you're bankrupting your whole personality and people just don't understand that because to be honest those people that were pulling from you they weren't pulling from you you know because they were really digging on you and liking you they were pulling from you because they were they just saw a place they can get something from they were pulling from you because they were able to try to, you know, pimp off your emotions, pimp off your skills, pimp off your talent uh, because you were genuine, you were nice, you were just a giving person, you know. And, and but you know, when you're trying to build a business, that's that's tough to maintain. That uh, even just you know, friends going out, wanting to go out, you know, partying, drinking, whatever you guys do from a social standpoint, you know, every. Friday we go out and do this, every Saturday we go and play golf, every whatever, you know, now you're in this business and you have to resist that, you have to be focused on what you're doing, right, and and so now your friends start talking about you, well, you you're not really one of us anymore, you're not one of our boys, you're not, you're not one, part of the sisterhood because, you know, you're not putting into our relationship anymore. You acting like you're too good for us now that you say you're a business owner or that you're trying to start a business. You act like you're too good to talk to us now. You're too good to spend time with us now. Uh, and it, that, that plays on your emotion. That plays on your feelings. That plays on your good heart, your great heart. And, and it just makes you want to give in and say, you know, I don't really want really to lose my friend. I've had this friend for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years, whatever, and don't really want to lose them. I, I want to go spend this time. And you negate your business. And guess what? That keeps you in that 95, 98 percentile of what, what, you know, what everybody else has, which is they don't have the, the luxury of the prosperity of life, the time that they want it back. 
uh, they're, they're busy working 80, 90, 100 hour work weeks for 40 hours a week or, or you know what they call 40 hours in a mule uh, you know they're busy working that slave labor and not and don't have that entrepreneurial spirit that you obviously have you, you, you hope, hopefully you're keeping up they're in a different place than you are and mentally it's tough to try to be there and here at the same time that's a big no that's usually one of your big earliest no's that you've got to get thick skin to be able to resist you got to get thick skin to be able to resist the the nose whether it's the nose that you're telling them and 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 that you need to give them a no or the nose that they're giving you because they feel like they don't have you like they used to uh, whether that's you know friends or family you you've got to just find your way to, to, to really break and stand on your own to focus and get what you got. You can't get something you never had by doing the same things you've been doing. You're going to have to do new things in order to acquire things that you never had. So that's an area of no that I want to kind of challenge you on. How do you defeat that? Well, it's a discipline, and this is a game where a coach will kind of get in your ear. When, when, when you're, like when my students call and I'm, or I'm, or I'm calling in, I'm checking in on them, and I'm being told that, you know, uh, they, they didn't get some things done because of this with the kids, or they didn't get some, they didn't execute some things because of this because of the wife, or they didn't execute some things because they went hanging out. You know, I'm going to tell them, listen, you're going to have time to do that kind of stuff again down the road. Right now, you don't have that kind of time. You need to be focusing on what you need to focus on with this business period and you're gonna have to let them know not right now baby I, I just can't not right now I've got something going I need you to trust me if you listen if they truly are your friends and if they truly love you they'll, they'll give you the space you need they'll give you the space you need you but you have to know how to do something different and sometimes that don't come naturally because the body and psychologically and mentally you, you, you kind of want to just go with where it's easy and there's no resistance in this business, there is resistance. In the real estate investing business, there are no's and there are resistance. Let me give you the second area of where you will get your no's from. And that is business. In this business, I just said that. In this business, listen, you're going to have no's from sellers. You are trying to prospect and identify properties that you can look at acquiring for some type of uh, investment strategy and uh, these sellers sometimes are not going to always want to go along with you on the ride you're going to have to spend time talking to them and building that rapport with them sometimes before you even get to get that far they're going to tell you you know take me off your mailing list stop calling me take me off your call list I'm not interested they're going to tell you you know uh, don't be leaving anything here on my doorstep uh, they're they're going to have some things that they may tell you just from a you know a no standpoint. And you know what? You know I had one of my students. Actually, I had a, two of my students recently just got off the phone, and they were like, "Yeah, Sam, I uh, you know I've I've been cold calling. I called like uh, all of these uh, you know pre foreclosures or whatever, and um, every one of them said you know either it was taken care of or no or." you know something that basically they didn't uh, get further with them every one of them and so I'm just wondering I just wonder if my lists are bad no <laughs> your lists aren't bad your list is the same list everybody else got because all that stuff is public information it's not that's not bad it's just a, it's a numbers game it's a numbers you got to be <laughs> you know what they say if you're not first you're last and then sometimes if you're in certain markets and there are 50 or 40 people out there doing the same thing you're doing you're competing against them and now it's just a matter of what's going to what what is going to set you apart that's going to want to allow them to deal with you in the meantime you could you got to go through the numbers you got to go through the numbers what those numbers are are going to vary from market to market uh, you know it's been 10 to 1 it's been 30 to 1 it's been 50 to 1 uh, the, this climate this day and age in America you know the economy is going pretty strong and everything it's, it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough so you got to keep in mind from even a seller standpoint that you're gonna get no's and just because you got no's doesn't mean that your business 
is not right doesn't mean that your business won't be successful no's are part of this business your other no's within the business realm comes from your buyers if you have a property that you've got under contract you're trying to get it to another buyer you know the buyers are always going to attack you in two areas there's two areas that a buyer is always going to attack you if they are trying to so-called negotiate and get a better deal for themselves versus what you're giving them even though what you have is a good deal sometimes folks are getting a little greedy and they try to put the squeeze on there's two areas that you're always going to be attacked it, well let me just say it's going to be one or the other area the first area is going to be the ARV oftentimes you're going to say what your ARV is and they're, they're going to come back and say what they think the ARV is okay fine you know there's always two sides to a coin there's always a prosecutor and a defense attorney <laughs> and then you got the middle there's always two sides to a coin and oftentimes folks are going to have the data that positions their side so when your your buyer comes and say well your ARV is too high that's because they're using the low ends of the ARV and I I try to you know do my best to stay in the middle of all of that I try not to you know I try not to undercut so much myself but on the same token I don't I don't never reach for the stars either so I know when folks are kind of attacking me, it's just they're trying to find a better position. Now, the other area that they attacked are repairs. What, what it might take to get that property restored. And there are so many different reasons that the repair figure uh, can be attacked. And it's not necessarily attacked. It's just that everybody that does repairs on a property have different resources different plans and they're just not the same some repairs can be a little higher for some because they don't have a crew and every time they get a property they have to hire a new crew for it uh, they are not buying enough they're not large uh, so every time they have to buy materials they're, they're paying higher prices where you have other companies that's got a crew that they just go from place to place to place that means the prices for them are going to be a little cheaper they're always buying in higher volumes from their vendor sources so they typically would get some great uh, vending prices discounted pricing on their merchandise so their repair costs on the same property could be two different uh, costs when you talk about two different folks and why why is one debating what you you estimate the repair costs are uh, another reason for the repair cost it could be a location uh, if you're dealing with a property way out in a remote area, it takes a little more money to, you know, to mobilize the resources to get that property taken care of. Uh, it could be repair costs because of how they want to finish. Some may want to finish to a rent standard. Some may want to finish to a total flip standard. Some may have a different strategy altogether. But the bottom line is that's an area you're going to be subject to attack. So when they're coming to you about talking to you about your deal and you're getting that resistance, the uh, buyers are typically going to attack you from a ARV standpoint or from a repair standpoint when they're trying to negotiate. And if you don't come to a place where you agree, listen, it's not a, it's, don't worry about it. This is, this is part of their, their thing. As long as you're doing the right thing, there's somebody out there who probably wants your deal. You just have to keep going through the numbers to find who they are. And I know a little some unique ways to to find the right buyer for this type of you know for a type of product that is not really taught and uh, you know I would only talk to my students about how to do some of those these are some of the really really secret you know there you got the gold then you got the platinum and I you know my students get the platinum from me not not you know I put the gold out here but you know my students get the platinum so <laughs> but um, the, uh, the another area of nose within the business are simply setbacks just things like you got a property set title you got a buyer and, and, and all of a sudden it gets to a time where it, you know it won't close why won't it close well maybe the seller is decided to get cold feet they don't really want to sell uh, I can give you some examples I had one that was under contract and they stopped wanting to sell because they didn't have an exit plan they didn't know where they were going uh, the, the, it was a couple one wanted to move to Oregon, the other wanted to move to Georgia. <laughs> I'm like, that's the opposite ends of the country. And this is a husband and wife, and they just didn't really have a plan. So uh, he came, he called me back, said, man, I, I really, I'm sorry, man, would you let me out of this contract? I just, 
I really can't have my family on the street. We really never really thought this through. And uh, uh, man, I'm, I'm begging in and I, you know, I conceded because I'm not in the business to hurt people. I'm in the business to help people. Was I in legal standing to sue him for performance? Yes, but am I? No, no, it's not, not the business I'm in. There are other reasons that the, uh, the business can fail to close. I, I had one. Uh, she and this was my fault she told me that uh, she wanted me to buy the property quick fast and in a hurry because she's got a sick dad uh, I did my typical 30-day thing out I could have I should have did it in a week but I didn't uh, I did my typical 30-day out put it on the calendar with some other things went to follow up with her on the week I was supposed to close she told me she deeded the property back to, to the uh, to the bank and I'm like Wait a minute, we had a contract. We're getting ready to close. I'm on schedule, all this stuff. And she was like, oh, just sue me. Just sue me. I told you my dad was sick, and that's what matters. That was my fault. Uh, this was years ago, but I still remember that. It was a learning lesson for me. But it was a no. And that no, you know, it sets you back because I had plans. I had committed some things, had some plans, had some things lined up, took some energy, even though I would let it wait, and, you know, blew it. But, hey, that's you, you live and learn. That was, like I said, three or four years ago for me. Um, other setbacks. You, you at the title company, and you, your numbers are saying this. You got your buyer lined up, sellers ready to go, and all of a sudden, the title company discovers another lien that was placed on it. And that now that lien was so large that it made the numbers just absolutely bad for that property. And it's one of those situations that uh, you, it doesn't look like you can even get the lien removed and whatever. But that's a setback. That's a no. That's a negative. This is where having thick skin comes into play thick skin and let me give you the third area let me give you the third area of a no and it's not necessarily a no it's just something that is not necessarily a comfortable place and that is when you have a coach and a mentor and they're telling you something that you need to hear versus what you want to hear you know, a lot of people have hard time if they feel like that they're not allowed to be themselves and allowed to just think the way they want to think and allowed to just be me. Uh, you know, we're in this age where it's all about independence and being me and being authentic and all this kind of stuff, which is great and, and it's huge, but on the same token, you don't want to reinvent the wheel you, if you don't have to don't reinvent the wheel this business has a way of being a business this is a business that's existed before you were you this business was existed before you were in your mama's womb and there's a way to do this business <laughs> and and when, when your culture mentor is trying to teach you the ways which oftentimes are going to be a little bit unnatural for you and who you think you are you have the choice to either learn and become a better and a more evolved person, or you can say stay who you think you are and stay with who what you think you got. Right now, you don't have the real estate business. You don't have deals that you're doing every month. You don't have the income. You don't have the luxury that life can give you when you have your own business and you have money coming in. You don't have that. That's why you're trying to get into this business. Maybe you think you're trying to go after being wealthy. Well. There's the same 24 hours in a day that you have that a wealthy person have. Why are, do they get the result and you don't? They can better handle the no's. <laughs> they can better handle wisdom being imparted into them. They can better handle, okay, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I need to hear. They can better handle that. They don't have to have their ego stroked all the time. You know, I had one of my students some time ago. He was telling me how he was feeling so good about himself because some buyers was in town and uh, they were talking about a property that he had under contract, uh, which they, very, they spent very little time talking about that particular property, but they spent more time talking about the area. And, you know, they took him to lunch and they paid for lunch and and, you know, I knew he was going to meet them because he told me up front that, yeah, I got some folk coming to town with this. But uh, he never really followed back up with me, and you know I found it connected with him. Hey, how'd it go? And he was like, Well, yeah, they, we went to lunch, and 
you know, we got to talking. I think, uh, you know, this is going to be a great relationship from a, from a, uh, from a, you know, networking standpoint. And, you know, and I said, bro, that, that's not what they were doing with you. <laughs> that is absolutely not what they were doing with you. What those buyers were doing, by the way, how they like your deal? Well, they didn't like it. Okay. I already know it's a good deal. It's a good deal for somebody, but that's not what they were doing for me, especially they were coming from, you know, hours away. So they, were, they weren't really the right buyers to go after. But you just never know. You give them some time. But what they were doing with you was pumping you for information. <laughs> pumping you for information, period. You don't build rapport with buyers. <laughs> you don't build. You build rapport with sellers. You don't have to build rapport with buyers. Your product builds rapport for you. <laughs> well, I call it building rapport, and you just being mean to me. You you know you 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 just think you know it, and uh, I call it. Uh, I'm just knowing how to build rapport. Okay, you call it what you want. You still haven't got your first deal. <laughs> you still haven't got your first deal. And I'm not saying that I'm always right. No, I'm not saying I'm always right. But I've done 130 deals. <laughs> I must have done something right in order to have the deals. I've had over over $500,000 of gross income in my real estate business. I know it's more than that, but that's conservative. You're trying to get your first one. You asked me to mentor you. In fact, not only that, you, you kind of like beg me, man, I really need to do this. I really need to do this, blah, 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 blah. But now you don't want to listen to me because of how I'm telling you how you spend your time. You know, it's the same thing with finding a realtor, finding a realtor. Every time you, you hear somebody says, you know, you want to start a business, get yourself a great real estate agent. No, that's not what I teach. In fact, that's how you can spend six months and 10 months without getting your first deal because you're still trying to find a real estate agent to work with. No, bad strategy, flawed strategy. You want to know how to get your business off the ground and get it going quick, fast, and in a hurry? You need to hire me as your coach. Click the link in the description, set a 30-minute free consult time with me, and we can kind of talk about which angles we can go, how we can help you with your business. But these are the golden nuggets that you won't really find, you know, out in the marketplace because it's valuable. It's valuable. Nobody's putting out the real viable golden nuggets. And this business, you, you really, 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 really need a mentor. Every successful investor uh, that's in this game that I know have had partners and mentors that they've been, you know, that they've had some impartations from. So. I want to encourage you to do the same. Uh, I hope that you found when I talked about the, these uh, these thick skin areas of having no and, and, and or, or getting the knowledge of no and having to have thick skin because you got to have thick skin with your family and friends. You got to have thick skin in the business. And if you have a mentor, you got to have thick skin with your mentor. Your mentor is trying to help you, not hurt you. Your mentor is trying to help you, not hurt you. And understand that your mentor don't really have to mentor you. So they're not going to sit there and beg and plead and argue and debate. They don't have to deal with that. You have to be a good student. <laughs> you have to be a good mentee to be able to have someone like myself or whoever you choose to pour into you. And that's why a lot of folks out there are not really taking on the mentorship uh, the way that I'm doing it because uh, uh, it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy, and there's really no money in it. Um, but... Uh, um, I'm just here out trying to help reach one and teach one. This is Sammy Duke coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. If you like this content, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. This is a mentoring and coaching channel. And if you are looking and need a mentor, you never had one, you need one, you need a coach. And I'm going to tell you, in this business, you need one. <laughs> You need one. It took me 10 months to get my first deal, and it didn't happen until I leveraged a mentor. Uh, check out the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline description, uh, uh, helpline link somewhere in the description, and uh, click it. There are a few other videos, but you can actually 
schedule yourself to be on my calendar and uh, where I would see it and I said okay I got an appointment with so and so and we would have a video conference uh, to talk about your business and how I can help you succeed so until then I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded God bless hey hey Sammy dude do rude back at you hey uh, are you smelling when I'm cooking are you picking up when I'm putting down you like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this. And uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, <laughs> don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description. Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then... I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom, doom. Out.